Good morning! Welcome back to Wellness and Wonder for another episode number 22. I'm here with the splendid Ivana Daniel. Good morning, Ivana. Good morning, Francesca. It's such an honor to be in your podcast. <laughs> Thank you so much. Me. And so wonderful that we sit next to each other. <laughs> yes, finally. Finally, finally, finally. Contact is so important. It is very important, especially for me as I'm a body therapist. <laughs> yes, I can't wait to introduce Ivana, Daniel, and their beautiful, amazing book. A manual for a contemporary body. <laughs> In this book, we don't find the information about wellness, but also about awareness, consciousness, and so much more. Ivana, before talking about your book, can we know about your past a little bit? So of course. So like Francesca, I'm Italian. Actually, I am Sicilian. We are lucky enough to be born in the same city. So we are both from Palermo. Yes. And I have to say that I know Francesca since she was Mary. born. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so, so she's like my aunt. Yes, exactly. I love her. And I absolutely love to be interviewed by this beautiful and amazing young <laughs> woman. So about me, I am born in Italy, but I came very young to the UK to study in my early 20s. And um, My destiny in Sicily was to be a lawyer. As you know, I went to law school, but I really didn't like it. I had to continue a family tradition of being uh, a lawyer to yes. continue the family business. It's never too late to change. And Ivana is an example. So I, I did follow for a while, but then I was very unhappy and I had to follow my true passion, which was dancing. So I went to ballet school and I was classically trained since I was three years old. So movement, moving and understanding the body was truly the, it was my life. It was my, my absolute everything. Your happiness. My happiness. Your it was my, my safe place and everything. So especially what is interesting is um, I was a dyslexic child. Oh, and yeah. at the time in the 60s, dyslexia was not recognized in school. They didn't know what it was. No, they didn't know what it was. So I was left-handed, dyslexic. I wrote like in Arabic, like Leonardo da Vinci, mirror writing. Oh, and wow. they thought that that was something really evil. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's quite scary because as soon as yes. people don't understand, so, they misunderstand. Exactly. So they really treated me at school um, differently. And they even went as far as tidying, tied, putting in, in the back with a rope my left hand to fall me with the right oh my God. so of course what I did develop and what I felt amazing and I write this in my book is when I went to ballet school and the language of movement was my language so there I could express myself and in the beauty of movement of classical dance I felt at home so I also develop an awareness and an eye Yes. I really started as a child to understand movement and to read the body. So it is something that I developed since literally I was a little, little, super little. because not being as a dyslexic child, when you cannot really follow that um, kind of uh, um, awareness and, 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 and understanding, then I really went into the movement. Because it's all connected in a way. It is all connected. All so connected. dance was really my safe heaven. Amazing. And then that's how I developed um, the rest. They say your safe place is where your heart is. So once you find your passion, you can be my anywhere passion. in the world that you feel good. Yes. So this passion drove me to leave law school, to leave my hometown, Palermo, and to pursue my destiny. Wow. And your <laughs> and destiny so is pretty intense. There's so much so, work, so much focus. You so my destiny, the day, yeah, day life, my Lana, destiny, you're impressive. No, you're, I can you're, say that. Thank you so much, Francesca. It is actually, I really would say that it is the fact that I pursue my passion. So my passion brought me back to dance. 
after studying law yeah. in my 20s again my passion brought me to then to the world to be in England to be in Paris where I dance in companies to teach dance my passion brought me back to London to um, go back to study I went to the Laban I am a Laban uh, center graduate wow. where I did my postgraduate degree and I really studied, I wanted to become a sort of a choreographer, dance teacher. But during that time, I had a terrible injury. Um, I had a terrible back injury. So that How old were you? Sorry, I was, I was, my yeah. first injury was in my 20s. Okay. And I broke my uh, right foot during a period. Oh, no. <laughs> and my second injury was in my late 20s in Paris, while I doing what's called a grand jeté, which was a, a jump, a leap on l'air <laughs> uh, in the air. And I just <laughs> fell badly and really hurt my back. So oh, no. it was Even 10 I'm years okay. of really pain. And that brought me to really understand and look at the human body from a different from point of view yeah. and perspective, more from a healing side. So I started my journey. And in the 90s, I started, I went to Laban, started um, teaching studies on, with, with dancers and really looked at how can I help this dancer that I saw injured. So that is when I started to discover the Pilates method in the 80s, the Feldenkrais, the Alexander technique, which are techniques that were at the time only used by professional dancers or musicians or singers. So you were revisiting all, revisiting all these techniques, um, transforming them making them yours in a way not yet not it yet. was okay. it was you know in the 80s and 90s so in the i became a pilates expert i went i studied a clinical pilates yeah um in the meantime i moved to singapore and that's where my study story started because in singapore i founded the first pilates center in all southeast asia so i was really the first person to bring the method and uh, and open my first rehabilitation studio in a very well-known hospital in Singapore. It was an honor really to be part of the hospital where I opened the first rehab center. And I had this amazing opportunity also to bring other methods like the gyrotonic expansion system, clinical Pilates. And this is where I developed really my method during the next 14 years in Singapore. So I spent really a long time. And I always say being and working in a hospital in Singapore for me was an amazing opportunity. It was almost like going, you know, to medical school. Not that I went to medical school. I'm not a doctor. It was like, but it being with all these doctors and being part of that, it yeah. was the most amazing experience of my life. So I really am so grateful to having experience that so then 14 years in singapore i came back to london i remember your beautiful days spent in these beautiful resorts yes everywhere I, and you were like a goddess ivana well i was a, a, in fact in the resorts i was a consultant for the aman resort yes. hotel and i was you a wellness a consultant. yeah consultant so i had the opportunity to travel around it was amazing but then reality a reality check to, <laughs> reality check back to london in 2011 where I founded my new um, studio or the, my new clinic called Ivana Daniel Body ID. Body ID stands, stands as Ivana Daniel Body Identity. How do you find your body identity? So important to know who you are. And this is where my- What book... do you mean with body identity, Ivana? Because I know there is a bit deep meaning behind it. Yes. It's more than what it seems to be. So in our society, and this is all about my book, people are very disconnected with the body. They don't know who they are. They don't understand they are. There is the social media. They all want to look the same. They all want to be that stereotype. Your body identity is to really understand who you are and really accept the beauty of your diversity. Amazing. It's all about oh. that. So as I write in my book, beauty in nature comes in all different sizes, shapes, and colors. And so it That's is the for the human body. Yes. So once you accept this diversity, then you find beauty in everything. And so it is for us. Absolutely. So, but what, how can we see the beauty in the outside world only if we feel it within us? So during this transformation within, that's my opinion, you can see the beauty outside. 
well, no. you know, no, you have to learn. <laughs> you have, you to, have to learn how to see the beauty. No, no, you have to be informed. Okay. It's very we have simple. To be informed. So for okay. me, it's all about being informed okay. and having the right information in a society where there is a lot of misinformation. It's a jungle. It's a jungle of misinformation. Yes. So that is where my book comes. Let's my put manual. it closer, but of course we will yes. text so, all the details. So my book is so quite light, I... fun. How many pages is that? It's the about book. 270 pages, wow. but really easy. Cool. It's easy. an amazing book. I read it and uh, I completely changed my mindset and approach on my body already after three days. So Ivana, I actually have already prepared a few questions for you because after reading the book, I thought about, uh, of course, presenting it uh, to our beautiful guests because everyone needs to read this book. So what is a contemporary body, Ivana? So a contemporary body is a body that is facing the challenges and the advantages of our contemporary society. What is the main challenge? The main challenge is that our contemporary body is really a body that is facing a very sedentary lifestyle. Yes. And we know that. We know. So a body that actually has not evolved with this because our body has been designed to be movement. So for thousands of years, actually exactly for 300,000 years, is a body that lived with survival skills and is a body that was used to be in movement. Men used to go to war, to run, to migrate, to fight, to be on horses. Women used to go and bring the water from the well to um, do all the chores in the house, to give birth in, into the wild. So, and walk and move. But now what is everything is about sitting and staying in front of a computer as we are doing now. So this body is craving for movement. So in this last 50 movement years- is the key. Is the key for wellness, absolutely. So in this last 50 years, this body is really being challenged by sedentary lifestyle. But there is an advantage of the contemporary body lifestyle. Yeah. The advantage is that our lifespan has increased. So the 50s are the new 30s. And the six, the 80s, the 60s are the new 80s. So we have this wonderful advantage because of all the research, the medicine, you know, we can look young and more beautiful. So that is a great advantage. But look at that, we have ahead of us more decades than we used to have. Yes. We survive, we can leave, you know, a woman in his in her 50s and a man in his 60s can be super. Um, but young inside, young inside and outside. But sadly, this lack of movement is really a big problem. Yes. So even mentally, is, because moving means it. moving your mind at absolutely. the same time. Absolutely. So this static lifestyle is bringing a problem because, as we know, static energy is not good for your energy for your mind and for your body yes we so, need to recharge our energy yes. and with ivana we will discover all the secrets thank you so this is what a contemporary body and what i do i give a bit of a picture to my readers to how to understand that and how to face these contemporary challenges yes absolutely ivana so actually, I love the name Contemporary Body. It's a, such you. a cool name. Thank you. It represents, you. I can feel it. It's everything. And this is only the beginning because my next books will be developing more about the contemporary. It will be the book about a contemporary woman. Yeah. A man for a contemporary man. Wow. And so on. So this is just the first one, the introduction for my contemporary manual. Yes, and contemporary also because uh, life changed, the lifestyle changed since the past. And so, uh, of course, we have to call it contemporary because we don't have the same body as before because no. of the food change, Everything. because of the diets, Everything. because of the ingredients are not the same yes. as before. Yeah. So contemporary, it's actually important. But yeah. what is important is we should take the advantages of our society and not to focus on the disadvantages. The only disadvantage 
sedentary lifestyle. Yes. Then we have everything else. So we should make the best of what we have yes, and sir. understand our body identity. See. Now you ask me, how do I understand my body identity? Yes, how do you feel it? First of all, you need to understand the different body types. It's like, I, I say in my book, it's like understanding the model of your car. Yeah. Okay, are you a Ferrari? Are you a sport car? Are you a BMW? Are you a Mercedes? Same for your body type. You can be thin, long, you can be more sporty, you can be heavier, more curvy. You, everything is beautiful. But understand because each body type, as you will see in my book, has got a particular regime to follow diet, personality, and lifestyle. So we are different. So first of all, understand who you are and then build up your life around this awareness. Amazing, this is Ivana. very important. Amazing. So from food, from, from personality to lifestyle, to exercise. So and most and also important- following your limits because some people push it too much and then they, they basically oh. they stop, they become lazy because they did too much. So also the balance is part of this. Well, you know what I say that, and I write in my book is very interesting. In fact, Francesca, did you talk about that? Because today the one who are pushing too much in our society is us women. Women are pushing too much in exercise. I see women in my clinic who come absolutely exhausted. Why? Because they want to push their body thinking that they want to be like men. Mm. But the most important thing in understanding our identities is to really celebrate the difference. The body of a woman is different physiologically from the body of a man, only physiologically, okay? So you cannot do what a male body does. You can do other things that the male cannot and vice versa. So this, what I find, for instance, in the gyms is that most of all these programs of exercise are catered and designed for men. Yeah. So we women have difficulties to adapt. So the woman goes into a lot of stress and our hormonal system goes into stress, exhaustion, and a lot of problems come from that. So I see that a lot in my clinic. Do you think one of the reasons why women are pushing it too much is a part of the comparison with the men, the media, the media, all these pictures on the media, all these showing off, which is of course important for business reasons, but then what about all these aesthetics showing every day our body? I think that doesn't help either. Absolutely. In fact, this is all about my book. Is media, we should not really... There is actually a good movement in the media about body awareness on that. There are a lot of celebrities that today are really doing a fantastic work. And I a lot is written about really giving people this new image and really to understand and accept this. So... I have to say that if you read well, the media is also helping you in that. Um, but there is a lot of junk in there, sorry to sorry. say that, a lot. And, and as I say, this in this jungle of misinformation, we have to be really selective. So why this manual? Because I'm also helping you to really filter. So my book gives you tips from A to Z on how to filter the information. That's yes, why so. it's a manual. So, so how to access the right information? I give you literally the guide of that. Yes. To whom is aimed this book, Ivana? Precisely to everyone. everyone. Any age. As I write here, a practical guide for men and women of all ages to learn how to understand their body. So very simple to everyone who really wants to find more depth and awareness in understanding the body. So to achieve a more balanced life and a more efficient and ageless body. Very simple.
Yes, and I've been talking about this book uh, of Ivana with my friends. I've noticed that many people of my age, younger people, they don't really read books about wellness, <laughs> but actually reading these kind of books help you open in your mind more than you think. So we must read information about wellness too, not only about news and political shit. <laughs> <laughs> so basically. No, I promise everyone it's very easy. You yeah. have practical tips. You have some really very easy, more awareness exercises. I really tell you where to find the right places, what to do, how to even understand your body is really a, a very simple guide. So this is not something that you will find, you know, difficult to read. So but, um, how can this book really help readers, apart from giving amazing information? Does it switch something in, people, in people's mind? It's more for me, it's all about being informed. It is, I have been someone who has done a lot of research. And for me, my vision is that the more, the more we give correct information, it's all about giving the public the correct and safe information. It's education. It's education. This is being educated. Grazie. So You're this is best. what I really wish to everyone, to educate everyone. Yes. So this book, can we say this, make the best of yourself related to wellness? Mm. No, then because you have to act. It's about action. No, it's, it's not enough reading about it. No, it, this book is educating you to make conscious choices about Echo. yourself. Conscious so choices. it gives you a, the opportunity to make a choice. Then it's up to you, readers. Yes. <laughs> it's up to you. I give you the guidance, I give you the correct information, then it's up to you what you want to make it. It's always up to us, Francesca. Absolutely, Ivana. We it's it's a life choice. But our choices are a consequence of our information. So, so getting firm on good things, Absolutely. then made good choices. Absolutely, too. that I agree. It's, it's, the information is always you know, so important. important. So I really hope that in my small, I can really make a bit of help to this contemporary society. But which was the main reason actually of why you wrote this book? I always want it. It is inside me. It's the reason is that drive I have to share this information with the world. It's a drive that burns inside Amazing. me. And I started this book 10 years ago. And I at one point I stopped it because uh, it was not easy as English is not my first language being Italian. And I didn't feel the confidence of, of writing, but I, I knew how to write, but there was something You're that- You're Ivana. Yeah, but I wasn't confident. And then, you know what it, it was? It was not the right time. I, I had, it was not the right time. I had the book, it was in my drawer and it was in my drawers for a few years. And then the lockdown- And then the lockdown. Came in and when people were saying, what am I gonna do? I said, you know what? This is the time. So second lockdown, this is when I said I have four months to take my book out of the drawer, yeah. find the confidence. I found an amazing team that really supported me and an amazing publisher. And that's it. It was done. Amazing. So, Thank it was you, always Anna. that. Thank you. But Thank can I you. ask you the last question? Because yes. once I'm interviewing you, I want to share your little secrets with yes. our friends and guests. How do you keep yourself? Because I don't want to say Ivana's age. No, no, I I'm, say to ah, everyone. Yes, okay. So Ivana I, is. Um, I always, you will read it in my book. I am in my 60s and very proud to tell the world. Very proud. <laughs> You're, my secret yeah. is a life in movement, healthy exercise, healthy diet, and a very open and mind. young mind. I really keep my mind open and and I exercise, I walk and I enjoy life. And most important of all, <laughs> being positive. So important. Being positive. And to believe and being positive. Absolutely. So that's my secret. And mine too. And yours too. And mine too. That's why we are together. <laughs> that's why we are together. That's why we always look happy, even yes. though we are not always happy. Of but uh, it's important to keep this energy flowing 
and be happy. Perfect. Exactly. So thank you everyone for listening. Thank you, Vanna, for I being hope, with us. I hope you will buy my book. It will be by the end of the month, it should be on Amazon. Um, so we will uh, send the link uh, on our media. Yes, so when it's ready, it's stuff. all that. And thank you, thank you, Francesca, yeah, for having me as your guest. Thank you, everybody. It was a, it's an honor to have you here. So if you want to check the latest episodes, uh, go on www.wellnessandwonder.co.uk. See you soon for another episode also with Ivana. Ciao. Vashi. Ciao. <laughs>